Today, I want to share how I came to terms with my arrogance as an engineer to only consider technical aspects of a project versus also bringing in the non-technical aspects such as privacy or user experience which are equally important. You see, I love working in the interface of hardware and software. So when hardware APIs for Bluetooth, USB, NFC started coming on the web platform, I was very excited and ready to implement them. Now while Chrome and Edge browsers are supporting these new experimental hardware APIs on their browsers, recently other major browsers like Safari and Firefox chose not to implement them on the concerns of privacy. Honestly, the term privacy is such a loaded word for me and honestly, I really don't know how to deal with it when it comes to a technical project. And then I remembered watching a Steve Jobs in a D8 conference 10 years ago. So have a listen. Are we going to be moving more into cloud-based things? Sure. But, but and doesn't that inevitably no. get you? No. Privacy means People know what they're signing up for in plain English and repeatedly. That's what it means. I, I, I'm an optimist. I believe people are smart. And some people want to share more data than other people do. Ask them. Ask them every time. So in this video, I want to go through my thinking process of using an experimental technology such as hardware APIs on the web, specifically web Bluetooth and web USB and compare it with a fairly mature technology, which is a geolocation API that uh, Steve Jobs was referring to. And I will share on how to gather all the information about these experimental technologies as a uh, number one step. Uh, number two, I will also talk about the different viewpoints about these experimental technologies. One is bullish and one is bearish, a very cautious approach. And thirdly, is what engineers do, how to experiment with these technologies and to actually build projects uh, which take tiny little steps to understand the implications that these technologies might have. So let's dive into hardware APIs on the web and how to deal with experimental technologies. You know, experimental technologies by its nature can seem very daunting because everything is emerging, it's new. We don't really know what impact it will have in large scale use. And so the first step is inevitably to put all the information at the table and we will look at the specifications of these hardware APIs, gauge their maturity level and also see which browsers can use them currently. So let's start with the geolocation API, which is a pretty mature one at this point because it is already a W3C recommendation dated a few years back. And in reality, the actual location through this API is not uh, really de derived from a hardware GPS sensor, but a collection of uh, network signals, RFID, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cell towers. Well, that's what the spec says. And the term W3C recommendation seems to be the final maturity level when defining a web specification. And uh, as you will see, later the rest of the newer hardware APIs are in the draft stage which means it is pretty experimental and it is currently published for review for many groups of people. And what about the browser compatibility for geolocation? Since this is a pretty mature web API, it is already available in all the major browsers. As you can see, Edge, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, all have the green checkbox. So in comparison, let's look at the web Bluetooth specification. It is in the draft stage. And as of today, this means it is not a W3C standard. For browser compatibility, if we look at the major browsers, the latest versions of Edge and Chrome support web Bluetooth, but uh, not for Firefox or Safari. And at this point, it is good to review just a little bit on the browser engines that these major browsers use. Both Edge and Chrome are powered by the Blink browser engine. And you can see why the availability of the new hardware APIs are same for both of these browsers. And Safari is powered by the WebKit browser engine. So it is different. And if we look at the browser 
further, uh, the feature status in WebKit browser engine geolocation is supported, which means Safari will have geolocation, whereas Bluetooth is the status of uh, not considering and it is the same for web USB. So similarly, if we take a quick look at the web USB API, this will once again tell us that the specifications are in the draft stage, which means once again, it is not a W3C standard and the browser compatibility is also not uniform. Edge and Chrome, the Blink based browsers have this support, but Firefox and WebKit based browser Safari does not. Now that we have learned about the specifications and their maturity levels for all practical purpose, let's run a small snippet of JavaScript code in the major uh, browsers, uh, well, basically Chrome and uh, Safari to see whether these three APIs are supported as we read them in the specs. Inside the HTML file within the script tags, I only have three blocks of if statements checking whether these three hardware related APIs are supported in the browser by checking for navigator.geolocation, navigator.bluetooth and navigator.usb. So when I open up this code in the Chrome browser, the dev console shows that all three APIs are supported. But when I open the same code in Safari browser, it says, as we know, the web Bluetooth and web USB are not available. The next step is for me difficult to consider it cognitively because there are two different opposing viewpoints. And uh, while the browser engine Blink is taking the optimistic or the bullish approach of integrating new hardware capabilities or other features for the web, the WebKit browser engine is taking a cautious or a bearish approach with regards to privacy. The article Platform Agency Theory by Alex Russell makes a thought-provoking case for the possibility of meta platforms like the web becoming irrelevant with time if it does not catch up and narrow the relevance gap. So this is uh, basically uh, the bullish approach. But with the integration of new features such as the hardware APIs, the web can continue to stay relevant while benefiting the developers at the same time. On the other hand, the web kit, which takes the bearish approach, raises the concern of browser fingerprinting, which is defined as in the W3C documentation, the capability of a site to identify or re-identify a visiting user. And when integrating new features, WebKit looks for fingerprinting vulnerabilities to improve user privacy. Well, you know, fair point. Hence, with Web Bluetooth, Web USB, and even geolocation, where I believe this is the GPS sensor, as of today, they are unable to put these features on the Safari browser. Well, now that we have considered all the information on the table and even considered both the viewpoints, even if they are different, what do we do as engineers? Especially if we want to implement these features, taking into consideration things like consent, data usage, and transparency. Once again, I'm not an expert in knowing how to deal with experimental technologies and what effects it will have on the society. Hence, I looked into a research paper on how we can deal with experimental technologies that have little historical operational experience. So on one hand, we can take a predictive approach and do a thorough risk assessment. Even then, the introduction of such technologies into the society comes with large uncertainties and unknowns. So the alternative is uh, can be a gradual and experimental introduction of this technology. The research paper quotes two other sources that have argued for piecemeal social engineering rather than revolutionary social change and to proceed in small or limited steps and to learn from trial and error. So reading the research paper was a good background in general on how to deal with experimental technologies. But you know, we are engineers, we are like, okay, so how, what do uh, I do with this hardware API, let's say with Bluetooth, and what does it mean to go in limited steps of trial and error? So I decided to limit it in two ways. One, by the type of end user, and number two, uh, by the scale. And so 
in case number one, type of end user, I will probably develop uh, only for developer tools. I will use these APIs in the context of it being used by other developers who are also aware that these hardware APIs are experimental. And in the case of number two, I will also be using these apps in terms of pilot testing or beta testing so that they are smaller in number and the users are also aware that these are experimental in nature. Noam Rosenthal uh, further explains in this uh, really great article on should the web expose hardware capabilities that web technologies such as Electron and Cordova, very popular ones, are also used for cross-platform development. So by allowing apps to ship any web framework, the App Store would essentially allow the app to run any unaudited code. Something to think about what exactly do we mean by the term web. And he goes on to suggest some practical examples of implementations. I specifically liked the one on user consent where he explains that the prompt should be about the content or action and not about the peripheral. Okay, so we will look at a practical example. This device here that I have is using Adafruit's NRF52 Bluetooth board and it is connected to a UV index sensor, a very, very simple one. So I will try to communicate with device via my Chrome browser on the laptop. So this is a very simple website I have as an example. As of today, when I try to connect to a BLE device via the web Bluetooth API, let's see what happens when I click, this prompt will come up and it will typically say connect to the device, but I don't really know know what it will do after this but nevertheless let's pair it well it says that it was trying to get a battery level let's pair it and let's start it and yep of course the battery is 99% as it is USB powered and I can simply stop it and reset the device you see this is a very very simple example now I have improved upon to add in more information for the user as suggested by Noam in terms of privacy and consent so when I click read USB index. So I'm not going to say connect to the BLE device. I'm straight away going to say read UV index so that the user is very, very clear on what I'm going to do. So once I do that, there'll be a little uh, explanation. Connect to the BLE device palm to read live UV index data. And this data is not stored. Well, if it is stored, then I will explain. And because this is an experimental feature, I will link it to the specifications and also the source code for verification because this is a developer tool. And notice what happens when I say connect to Palm. The same course, uh, the prompt will come up in Chrome and I will pair it. And this is also something I've improved upon. Now, when I click start, just like uh, how our location gets indicated. There's a little location symbol on our phone when it says location is being scanned. I will also say Bluetooth is connected, reading UV index, no data is stored. So when I stop it, Bluetooth is not uh, being used to read. But when I start it again, once again, this little Bluetooth symbol will come up and I can stop it and reset the device. So this is how in my version of understanding user consent and privacy, I've improved upon and I will give more details to the users that will be using my app with web Bluetooth API. So do have a look at this video by Francois Buffault, where he talks about more hardware APIs on the web. Frankly, I have never tried uh, the other APIs he talks about, so I'm looking forward to trying them out. I started this video with the confession that I used to only consider the technical aspects of a project. But after this, I have added on, not subtracted, more viewpoints regarding this project with respect to privacy, with respect to the fact that it is an emerging technologies and other viewpoint. And in doing so, I don't think I am subtracting away any due diligence that is required for this project or any other project at hand. And even though the viewpoints are conflicting in nature, one taking a bullish approach in terms of Chrome and Blink browser engine, and the other one taking a cautious bearish approach in terms of WebKit and Safari, I have no doubt that people on both sides of the debate are way smarter than I am to come to that conclusion that they have 
even if they are different. So I have one final step to do. You see, in the past, I have made videos about web Bluetooth and web USB, and some among the listeners have very, very valid and exciting questions, like how can we build and release this feature on the App Store? I have pinned comments on the updated 2021 version on both the videos to give reference links to the browser compatibility, W3C standard documents, as well as the link to further explore more hardware APIs on the web. So let me know what you think about using hardware APIs on the web and uh, about experimental technologies in general. I myself have never used uh, the other hardware APIs such as the web NFC, web HID and web serial. So I am definitely looking forward to using them either as part of developer tools or in small scale beta testing apps. So I hope you learned something from this video and uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.